What is Keystock? What is it used for? How do you cut it? How do you install it? Today we're working on a commercial package unit. We're replacing a blower wheel, the belt, the pulley, the shaft, and we're installing some Keystock. And I'm excited for you to learn more about what Keystock is and how it's used. Click the like button, subscribe, hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's learn what Keystock is. Let's do it. Look at this big. How big is this unit? Uh, 15, 15 ton? 15 ton. Whoa, dude, this is actually pretty heavy. Yeah, it is. Especially when I'm only using one hand and you're using two. Whoa, what happened? Looks like that, uh, well, we could just take the, the blades out and just use the disc. Sure. Yeah, and then they can have lots of air. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's going to take how long to get this equipment? Uh, until next July. Next July. So they said like, what, 40 weeks? 40 weeks or something that, something like that? That's crazy. So what are we going to do? We're going to try to repair it? or We're going to try to take it apart, get a new blower wheel on it. Got it. Okay, cool. Oh, is that a crack? That's what I was worried about. Oh, wow, yeah. Pulley, is the pulley cracked? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, that, that bracket. The bracket is cracked. Yeah, new brackets are coming with it. Okay, new bearings, awesome. New brackets, but oh, look. It's welded. This that's is the welded. Problem. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We can we can beat that off. that off. And then re-weld it if we have to. All right, cool. This is key stock. This is a bandsaw. And we are cutting this keystock. Keystock is uh, commonly referred to as keystock because it is a square or a flat uh, precision piece of metal that's used to attach a shaft to a gear or a pulley. So we're going to attach our pulley right in that blower housing over there. Blower wheel as well. Blower wheel as well with this keystock. But we got to, and you went ahead and measured this, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't have to hold it. What am I going to do? Just stand here? Stand here and look pretty. That's amazing. Uh, it's a shaking. That is beautiful, man. Let's go from this side. You put the cord there in there next time. Oh yeah. Oh, we can cut the cord in half. It'd be great. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here, man. That's nice right there. That is nice. Ugh. Got a few of them. Let's go see what these are going to be used for. Look at that. Look at that. So this is gonna fit right here. Oh, we got to line it up. And then right here, you can see this wheel. We use this key stock, slide this key in right here, and that's what's going to connect this wheel to this shaft. Got to line everything up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where can you find key stock? Key stock is available online. You can go online and purchase it and have it delivered or you can go to a local bearing and supply company. Look online, type in Keystock in your Google search bar, make sure your location is on, and you should be able to find a Keystock near you. And this is what the old wheel looks like in the old shaft, and we used the bandsaw to cut that shaft. You can see it's been cut, and that's how we actually got it out of there. So it looks good, man, it looks good. You think we can reuse this? Sure. Let's go. We have a guy that works here. His name is Bob. And if you have a Bob where you work, just know Bob could probably rebuild that. The bracket broke on this and we had to weld the bracket together. So this was cut in half and we welded it back together. And now we're able to use this bracket. I'm gonna take the tensioner pulley off. Thank you. 
And sometimes this screw right here that holds the tensioner pulley, it gets rounded off because people don't use a proper tool for it. Like me, they use a pair of channel locks. Just being honest, they'll use a pair of channel locks and they'll end up rounding that screw off. So if you've ever had a trouble getting this off, it was probably because of someone like me. I'm sorry. Just want to go and apologize to you. All right, so to get this out, you want to bring it all the way down because there's a space at the very bottom where you have room to actually pull it out. See that on the back? That's what holds that tensioner pulley inside there. See this one? This one doesn't have one. Mm, so you got to take it off. Look at that. It's beautiful. Go ahead, sorry. Just wanted to see how you work there with your gloves and your, well. your tensioner pulley. You're probably not going to record, want to record the next part. Go ahead, man. Smack it, scream at it, cuss it, do whatever you have to. We all have a different method. When you can't find a hammer, that's when every other tool becomes a hammer. I've used a vacuum cleaner as a hammer one time. <laughs> I wish I had a video of that. <laughs> Here, clean that. Okay. Got it. A little rusty there. Mm -hmm. A little rusty. Mm-mm-mm. Some people call me a little rusty. <laughs> How's it look? Nice and shiny. Yes. Boom. When the tensioner pulley goes bad, usually an indication is you can hear a noise, some rattling, some chirping noises, and that is an indication that the tensioner pulley is going bad. So to tighten the bearings down, we gotta use a star bit, not an Allen tool. This right here is an Allen tool, and this is what we're going to use to tighten this set screw down once we get the key stock right here in this slot. A keyway is a groove or a channel for a key. Link in the description for this bandsaw if you want a bandsaw like this. This comes in handy for cutting unistrut, for cutting key stock, for cutting shafts. Ready to install this blower housing inside of this commercial package unit. This is where the wiring will plug up to our motor, three-phase motor. We got the adjustable sheave here. We got the idler pulley or tensioner pulley installed. We got good tension. Our fan belt is not too tight, not too loose. And we've got the non-adjustable pulley on the shaft. Wheel is lined up, ready to rock bearings are tight installed the keyway using the key stock there we're good to go all right this is the blower compartment we're gonna slide that housing in there's an angle here that we can set this side of the housing in and then slide it and then nothing up here so We'll screw a couple screws in that housing. That'll hold it to the side of the panel. There's the indoor coil. Circuit number one, circuit number two. We got two circuits. There's the wiring for that motor to power that motor. And this is a package. It looks like it's not a package of gas, so it must be just a straight air. I bet, straight air package unit. I don't think there's even any electrical heat in here. So if it was, it'd be right there in that section. This is the compressor section. Slip this glove on and let's flip the blower housing over. Because the belt, belt goes on the bottom. James will probably want to change positions too. Right. Set it down this way. Right, maybe. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe you want me to get that in, or, or you just pick up this one here. And I'll pick up this in. And that's heavy. Imagine doing this by yourself. Probably a no-can do. Whoa. This is going to be wonderful. We may need to take this top panel off. And get in there, won't we? 
Yeah, my other cheek. Yeah. I think it'd be easier. Probably so. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, that worked. Now, one of those I have to get in, then probably get out the top of the way. I think I can help you. Yeah. All right. Now, can you pick that up, Tiffany? Now we don't have to hold the motor, but we do have to mount this right here, which goes right here. So we'll have to slide the housing back a little bit. And then we got a couple screws to put on up here. So, man, those new bearings look great. All right, got the housing in place. I want a color for color on this. I'm plugging the power up on these terminals here, these line voltage wires so that I don't reverse the polarity and the blower's not spinning the other direction. Okay, so, looks like we need a wire tie for this. Got one screw here, two, three, four. And then we had one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that the screw is tight against the keyway and that hub for that wheel everything else is tight ready to go all right let's get some power so james says my snips are probably messed up because look this is what happens when you cut copper with your snips they won't cut a zip tie <laughs> that's sad man my condolences to my green pair of snips sorry Okay, let's uh, turn the thermostat on. Fuller refrigeration. Fan on. Beautiful. Beautiful. New wheel, new shaft, new bearings, new idler pulley or tensioner pulley, and new belt. Beautiful. And it, make sure it's spinning the right direction. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments what you learned. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and where you're from. Do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. I really appreciate all of my subscribers and especially my members. If you haven't seen my members-only videos like HVAC sales training, geothermal training, how to size equipment, how to size ductwork, how to install ductwork. Do not forget to go check out the members only videos that are there for my level three members. If you need my phone number, you need help, you need tech support, you need the guides that I have, just click the join button, become a member, let me know in the comments, say I joined, I'm a member, and I'll send you my email and that'll lead to contact with me. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians, I'm Tad. And I'll keep you cool if you let me.